morning, the papers were calling it the biggest clash between the royalty and the church for 40 years, it being Prince Charles's remarks to a Salvation Army meeting in which he criticised those aspects of religious doctrine which, in his words, cause unnecessary distress. Was the prince referring to the wedding difficulties of his cousin, Prince Michael of Kent, or was he worried about his own future? Is Charles in love with a Catholic, queried the son, as perhaps only it could. Does it all matter anyway? With me is a leading Roman Catholic layman and staunch monarchist, Norman St. John Stevens, MP. Norman St. John Stevens, do you think Prince Charles was referring specifically to the marriage of his cousin when he made those remarks? I would think it unlikely. It may have been somewhere in the back of his mind, but it would be very unusual for a member of the royal family on such a public occasion to refer to a family difficulty in that way. I see the people have taken it like that. I rather doubt whether he was referring to it. Was then he expressing the misgivings of thousands of people? He may have expressed what is in people's minds, certainly, about this, because I think uh, a lot of people feel very sad and disappointed uh, that uh, a couple like this haven't been able to have a marriage in church. They can't be married in the Church of England, they can't be married in the Roman Catholic Church, and they've had to put up with the second best in a register office. And I think many people have sympathy with them. They feel they've been caught up in a kind of ecclesiastical dispute, and they've been the ones who've suffered. Couldn't the Pope have made an exception in their case and allowed them to marry in church? After all, the Baroness is a staunch Catholic. Yes, the Pope could have made an exception, but I think it would have been very invidious for him to make an exception for a, a royal couple, because after all, the rules are for everyone. The rules are there, and the rules say, this is the rules of the Roman Catholic Church, that the Roman Catholic partner has to make a promise to do all that's possible to bring up the children in the Catholic faith. And clearly, from the words of the Baroness, from uh, the words of the Prince, it was impossible for that condition to be fulfilled. And so, I would pass on to the next stage. I would say within the parameters of the existing rules, I think the Pope uh, was probably right to take the decision he did. But then I asked myself, are these rules right? And I think if two people of different faiths get together in marriage, they've created an ecumenical situation, they've created a relationship between two churches, they're responsible for the upbringing of the children, and it should be their decision, free from any pressure from any church, as to how they decide the children should be brought up. Would you have counted as pressure the Vatican official who said that he regarded Prince Charles's remarks as a bit of a cheek? Isn't that a bit strong? I think it's a bit of a cheek for a Vatican official, an anonymous being, uh, to speak out in that way. After all, the people who should speak are the heads of the congregation. BBC Two's William Wyler season of films continues in a little over ten minutes with The Little Foxes, starring Betty Davis and Herbert Marshall. Here on BBC One now, Parkinson. <laughs> Evening and welcome. George A springtime illusion. <laughs> the bottle said roses. And you can't have green roses. Or so one supposes. So what were we drinking? So cool and so bright.